Hello everyone, Happy New Year, 2021, here we are. Today, we're going to be doing a physics problem where we have important cargo being thrown off the top of this lighthouse at 15 meters per second, 60 degrees above the horizontal, at a height of 8.75 meters, and this boat here is moving 45 centimeters a second towards the left, and they want us to know, they want us to find out, how far away does the boat have to be at the instant that this object is thrown? And the goal is for this object to land right here at the front of the boat. Okay, so let's do it. This is going to be um, a multi-step kinematics problem, perhaps one of the most challenging, maybe not most challenging, but one of the longest ones that we've done so far on the channel. But um, if you use the short and the long equation and you take your time with doing the two phases like we're going to be doing and writing down what you know and really examining the problem closely and thinking about your steps as you go, then I think you'll find out this problem is not too bad. This problem in specific was something, we had something similar on one of my exams. So this um, is supposed to be one of the harder ones, but hopefully today it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay, so an overview of what we're going to do is we're going to break... First, we're going to break this problem up into two different phases like we've done in the past, where the first phase is going to be in the y direction from this point at release to here, and then the second phase in the y direction from this point where the velocity in the y direction is zero to here. We're going to find the total time that it takes to get from here to there, and then we're going to move on to the x directions with that time, and calculate how far the object wants to go and how far away the boat must be. Okay, so let's do it. How far away must the boat be when the object is thrown? Well, let's write down what we know. So we can say y final. Well, we know that the y final or y is right here, but we don't know what height that's going to be. So question mark. Y initial we said is 8.75 because that's the height of the lighthouse. Vy naught, well, if we break our velocity into its components, so here's the vector, here's 15 meters per second at 60 degrees, and here we have the velocity in the x naught, and the initial velocity in the y, and that makes a right angle. Then we know that Vy naught is equal to 15 sine 60 degrees meters per second and vx naught is equal to 15 cosine 60 degrees meters per second okay so vy naught is 15 sine 60 degrees meters per second the final velocity in the y direction for this first phase right here the velocity at this instant where oh the velocity at this instant it's going to be zero, right? Because when it's reached its top height, it's going to go back down. And in order for it to change directions, it needs to momentarily stop, okay? So Vy at that point is zero. So let's write that down. For phase one, Vy is zero meters per second. That's the final velocity. Acceleration to gravity is always negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Time it takes to get there, we don't know. So, start off with the long equation. I can get rid of this for now. I guess I could have just moved it, but we got rid of it. It's okay. Y minus Y naught is equal to V Y naught T plus one half A Y T squared. Let's make it so we can see what we know. So, Y final, we don't know. Y initial is 8.75 meters. Vy naught is 15 sine 60. Acceleration to gravity is negative 9.81. And then I'm going to add this 8.75 over to the other side because it's got this negative sign. So y is equal to 8.75 plus 15 sine 60 times time minus 4.905 t squared. I just took this one half and multiplied it by negative 9.81 to get negative 4.905. 
Okay, so we've got two unknowns. We've got t unknown, and we don't know y, so we're going to put an arrow on that and move on to the short equation, which is vy minus vy naught is equal to ayt. Ay is negative 9.81. Vy naught is 15 sine 60. Vy final, 0. So we're getting negative 15 sine 60 is equal to negative 9.81 t. The negatives will cancel and turn into positives. And solving for t, we get t is equal to 1.32 seconds. And then using that t, the t that it takes to get, the time that it takes to get to the top where the velocity is zero, I can take this t value and plug it into our equation up there. So everywhere that I see a t like there and there, I just plug in 1.32, and that gives us an answer of y is equal to 17.35 meters. I'm just boxing these because these are going to be helpful. These are not technically answers yet, but it's going to help us get to the right answer. So just stick with me. So we've got the time it takes to get to the top and the max height that it reaches. And now with the max height we can now find out how long it's going to take to go from 17.35 meters up to the ground where we are considering the boat to be. And then with that, we can just find the total time by adding this time to the time that we're going to find from this. So let's do it. At this point, we're going to be moving on to phase two, which is from here where velocity is zero. So we're going to have initial velocity in the y direction of zero. And we're going to have an impact velocity here, and it's going to take some amount of time. So this is our phase two, okay. So y final, we know zero meters because that's where the boat is. Y initial, we just found was 17.35 meters. Vy naught is zero meters per second because we're stopped at the top. Vy final, we don't know. Acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Time it takes to get to the bottom from the top, we don't know. So. Long equation, y minus y naught is equal to vy naught t plus one half a y t squared. Let's see what we know. We know y final is going to be zero. We know initial y is 17.35 meters. Vy naught is zero because we're stopped at the top. Acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Now we've got Negative 17.35 is equal to negative 4.905t squared. Now by isolating for t, we can solve and say that t is equal to 1.88 seconds. Now if we wanted to, we could go into the short equation, which is the vy minus vy naught is equal to acceleration times time. But because the problem doesn't ask for an impact velocity, they only want to know how far away the boat must be, I'm not going to bother with going to the short equation. But just so you know, if you had a problem like this where you were supposed to find the impact velocity, you could just take this time and find the impact velocity using the short equation. That's the final velocity minus initial velocity is equal to acceleration times time. Okay, but we don't need that. So... Now that we know that t is equal to 1.88, and this is falling from the top all the way down, and this is going from the initial point to the peak point. So right, we got 1.32 going up like that, and then 1.88 seconds to go down. So adding those together, I'm going to say t total is equal to 1.32 plus 1.88, right? Because here is the time in seconds that it takes to go from here to here. And then it takes an additional, additional 1.88 seconds to go from here down to there. Okay, so I can say t total is equal to those two added, which is equal to 3.20 seconds. Okay, so that is going to be helpful because now we're going to move on to the object, which is, right, this orange box or whatever it may be. Apparently it's important cargo and it needs to get on this ship. 
but we're going to move on to the x direction of this because we've just conquered the y direction. So we're going to move on to the x direction using the total time that we just found, which is that 3.2 right there. Okay, so x final, we don't know. x initial, we can call that 0 because it's on the far left meters. Vx initial, when we did the, um, the velocity vectors, remember we have 15 cosine 60 degrees meters per second. Vx final, we know because acceleration is equal to zero in the x direction, that Vx final is always equal to Vx initial because we're ignoring air resistance. So for acceleration in the x, zero meters per second squared. Time it takes to get there, we just said 3.20 seconds, right? The time that it takes to get to the top, plus the time that it took to get to the boat. Okay, so let's find x. So we got x minus x naught is equal to vx naught t plus one half ax t squared. x final, we don't know. x initial, zero. vx naught, 15 cosine 60 degrees. Acceleration in the x direction is zero, so that whole term's going to go away. And we're getting x is equal to 15 cosine 60 times time. Well, time we know is 3.2. So that gives us a value of x, or 24 meters. But be careful. This is definitely not how far away the boat must be, because remember, this is how far the object wants to go, thrown at 15 meters per second at 60 degrees above the horizontal. This is how far the object wants to go. This is where it's going to land in the x direction. So we want the boat to be right at 24 meters. But remember, the boat is moving to the left 45 centimeters per second. So we know that it has to be 24 plus some distance so that the second that the object hits here, or here I should say, the boat is right at 24. I think it will make more sense once I show you what I mean. So we know that the object wants to go 24 meters far and we want the boat to be at 24 meters when that object gets there. So now let's do the boat. And it's also important to realize that direction completely matters, right? Because we said that just by convention, upwards in the y direction is positive and to the right in the y direction is positive. You think of your, your xy Cartesian plane right here. Here is your positive x's and here's your positive y's. Well, it's the same thing for velocity. So we've got this boat moving at 45 centimeters per second, and that's in the le that's towards the left, so we're going to call that a negative. Okay. Let's do it. So x final, we want that to be 24 because that's where we want it to be so the object can be right there at that very instant. So the important piece of cargo lands right on the boat x initial, that's definitely what we're solving for. So we don't know because the question is, how far away does the boat have to be initially when this object was released? So we're solving for x naught. How far does the boat have to be so that when the object hits here, the boat is just catching it? Okay, so we're solving for initial x. vx naught is, whoops, 45 centimeters per second but we want it in meters per second, so it's 0 0.45 meters per second. Vx final is equal to Vx naught. Acceleration is 0 in the x direction. T, 3.2. Okay, because that's how long the object is in the air. So, doing the long equation, x minus x naught is equal to vx naught t plus one half ax t squared. We know that that's going to go to zero because acceleration the x is zero. We know that this is going to be 24. We don't know this. vx naught is 0 0.45 meters per second. Time, 3.2. So multiplying 0 0.45 times 3.2 we get 24 minus 0 0.45 
times 3.2 is equal to x naught, right? Because I took this term and I subtracted it over, and I took this term and added it over to isolate this. So I've got 24 minus this is equal to this. Hopefully that algebra makes sense. Anyways, oh, you see I misspoke. This is tricky. Vx naught is not positive. It's not positive. It's negative 45, negative 0 0.45. So this should be a negative. Sorry about that, everyone. Because, and that's because it's pointing to the left. Because it's going in the left direction, that's going to be a negative. So that's why I put the negative there. So that means that this sign has to be a plus. And now we're going to get an x initial value of 25.44 meters. And that is the answer. That is the answer for how far the boat must be away when the object is released in order for the cargo to reach the boat safely. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm sorry if that last little negative slip up mixed you up a little bit, but that's how to conquer this problem, and with practice, and thinking about it, and drawing your velocity vectors, and writing out what you know, hopefully this will make sense. Um, this is an important problem, and I think it's a good problem to try and to do, because if you can do this one, the odds are you can do almost any kinematics problem out there. Well, thank you for watching. Um, it's January 1st, 2021. I think we're all crossing our fingers that this year's going to go well. Um, Wish you all the best of luck. Thanks for watching. Bye.